Hi guys, hello and welcome to Whimsical Wednesday. It is Wednesday night here on the Dixie Belle Paint main page. My name is Tracy. Uh, let's see here, what is this saying? What is that? I am getting like a little ad. I got a little ad popped up on my screen. Please say hello when you come on on this Wednesday night. We are here. Hi, Jasmine. Thank you for being with me tonight, Miss Jasmine. Jasmine is here uh, manning comments. If you have any questions once we start working, if you have um, any questions about product or anything that I'm doing, please reach out. Dixie Bell is here to answer questions for you while I teach you something that is really um, different. <laughs> <laughs> really, really different. So please say hello. I am going to get started. Let me tell you guys that I have not done anything else to this early American hutch. Hi, Lisa, that we started last week. So y'all know that I'm painting this piece right here. This uh, early American maple hutch. It's a little china hutch. It's a family heirloom. Um, from a client of mine. Actually, she's a co-worker of mine. Hi, Deborah. Hello, Rebecca. Yes, please always tell us where you're tuning in from. We love to know that. Dixie Bell loves to know that too, so thank you. Anyway, we painted that piece behind us live last week, and I was a little bit stuck because um, the early American pieces are really hard to get away from. So I don't want it to not look like an early American piece, but it's not really a great match for my little client slash coworker who is young and trendy and um, has an adorable sort of mod farmhouse looking thing going on in her home in New Mexico. And she just signed on. Hello, Miss Chelsea. Look, I have it hidden. Um, so I did send her a sneak peek today. She is on live with us right now. So she is going to get a little bit, um, of a bigger view in just a second than the sneak peek. <laughs> so um, real quick, I wanted to tell you, if anyone on here is a retailer, a Dixie Belle retailer, you know that we love when the retailers are on and they're watching, please feel free if you're a retailer to share where your store is and um, that way if people are looking for product, if they've never used Dixie Belle, they know that they can go to somewhere um, close to them and that way they can see and touch and feel the paint and look at colors and I would love to, for you to share that information. Um, and if you're a retailer, the Dixie Belle workshop that is at the end of this month, if you have not signed up for that workshop, this will be my second year at the Dixie Belle, uh, at the Dixie Belle workshop with the retailers. It's only open for retailers. I would love, love, love to meet you in person. And I would, if you were there last year and you're not planning on going, please do. I would love to see you again. It's going to be bigger and even better every year. They say it just gets better and better. And last year it was my favorite workshop for the whole year. And I really, really hope that you will be there. There are just a handful of tickets left, but they really want to get those taken care of so they can move forward. And um, it's in just a few weeks. It's at the end of February. It's in, it's just a month away. So, um, Anyway, so if you do not have a retailer in your area or if you don't have time to go shopping and it's easier for you to order online, my link, my affiliate link is at the top of this video. If I, if what I'm about to show you inspires you and you decide that you would like to try this yourself um, and you might want to try it in some new colors and you want to order, just follow my link and order that way and then Dixie Bell knows I've sent you and, you, and I get a little bit of a kickback for that as well and that is... Um, means the world to me. So thank you so much. Um, hello to law. Hi, honey. Thank you retailers for sharing, for sharing and share it, share this video with your pages. Let people know that we're on. I would love for you guys to, um, share this with your friends and family. And, um, so here we go. So, so far behind us, we started at the top of this cabinet. Um, I've got my colors here that I used. We started out at the very top with a French linen. It's a very light gray up at the top. Um, it's kind of a gray that pulls a taupe color, and I told you guys that if it's around browns, it's going to pull brown. If it's around grays, it looks more gray. So French linen above at the top is gray, and we moved down into hurricane gray. So that's why French linen is pulling gray, because we've put it by gray. If you put French linen by black, um, it also looks gray. But if you put French linen by any of the chocolate colors or some taupey colors, it tends to go a little bit brown. So that helps you guys. We still don't know the Canada, that we still don't know Canada details. 
We still don't know that. I am so sorry, but we don't have, we are going, we just don't have the, the location yet. That is still being worked on. Um, but I can't wait. And it's in, it's in my little calendar. It's in my books. And don't forget also that I've got my own workshops that I'm doing at some Dixie Bell retailers. And thank you all um, that have reached out to see if I could um, come and hold a workshop in your area too. I really appreciate that. And I look forward to it. And I hope we can make every single one of them happen. I do. Okay, so the top of this cabinet is French linen. It blends down into Hurricane Gray. And then what did we do next, guys? We did use, we did do Bunker Hill Blue. Bunker Hill Blue, remember, it looks very cobalt, but remember when I held it next to cobalt, it didn't look cobalt anymore. Cobalt Blue is like in-your-face blue, right? This Bunker Hill Blue is right here, right over here in this region. This right here, where you see gray kind of pulled down into the middle, we brought gray from the top down into the middle, and that is our Hurricane Gray. And then I blended it with Bunker Hill Blue, so it's kind of got a blend of the gray into the blue that direction. Then at the very bottom of the piece, we went, thank you, it, they're, you know what, they're kind of big, it keeps getting caught on my jawbone. <laughs> but my kids got me these one year for, I don't know, like my birthday or something. All three of my kids bought me these from some artist. Um, thank you. Um, and then it blends all the way down into the bottom in, in the navy. I almost went black down in the bottom, but we've gone with Hey Adele, uh, into in the navy thank you you know nita it is really pretty it it's a a pretty bold color but mixed with a little bit of hurricane gray it gives this really soft kind of a it's actually very denim very very denim color okay so we've got a we've got several hundred couple hundred people on here which i'm really excited about because i can't wait to show you all this hey pat hi there Miss Pat, Miss Pat is one of the retail, a Dixie Bell retailer in Iowa that we are actually going to be holding a workshop at her place in April, my birthday week. All right, here we go. Are you ready? I wanted to add a touch of glam, you guys, to this piece. I wanted to kind of draw the eye away from the spindles. Um, I have not done anything to the top of the piece other than paint the base coats and blend. That's all I've done. I will shade highlight in the cracks and crevices up there I will it's it will get some love it's just just know so focus on the bottom right now all right I was inspired to do this based on a carpet literally a carpet like a huge carpet in a big fancy hotel in town here called the uh, where were we the JW Marriott the JW Marriott here in San Antonio, Texas. I was inspired by the carpet. This was all in brown. So what I'm about to show you is in blues and grays uh, with a little bit of uh, tea rose and gold. But it was in browns and I took a picture of it and my family thought I was crazy because I was like down taking an up close picture of the carpet, but I was so inspired by it. Um, and I, it's, I'm gonna tell you what it is. I'm just gonna show you. I've done this before, but I've never done it by hand. I've done it as a tech, like a technique. I'll tell you in a minute. I'm just gonna show you, okay? I did this did this by hand with like a gazillion different brushes. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm excited, I'm so excited. Please, 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 if you love it. The retailer is Salvage Soul Pam, and it's in um, Perry, Iowa. Is that correct? Put Pat, not Pam, Pat. Pam, it's Pat of Salvaged Soul in Perry, Iowa. Y'all ready? <laughs> I did Malachite Jude. Do you like? I hope you love it. I hope you love it. I'm going to take you all the way down so that you can get a good look here. Look. <laughs> Do y'all <coughs> Do y'all like it? I love it. I carried it only this far. So only only this far. I did all of that today. Just, I just went for it. You like it, Sally? Thank you. Thank you, Adele. Thank you, thank you. I love it. You like it, Jasmine and Mercedes? I'm so glad you like it. Can y'all see the reflection in the gold? I mean, the gold really adds it a fancy up, right? So I didn't want to take it up any higher. I didn't want to do it all the way across. Um, I originally had 
I originally had wanted to do, when I saw it on the carpet, I wanted to do it on a big long piece and do it all the way across the front of a dresser. Yes, I'll take y'all in closer. I sure will. Hold on. Well, y'all, we're about to get real up close and personal because we're going to do this together. I'm going to show y'all how. I'm going to show you what, what I did. And we're going to do it uh, very, very up close. We're going to take it around the side. So let me get the light on it, and I'm going to bring you in here. Now, I can't see what y'all are seeing, but I think this gives you a good visual here. You know, like... Just giving you a good close-up. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm showing y'all. Good? <laughs> and back to me. Back to me. Yay! I'm so glad you like it. So we've got a good little blend going on. The gray comes down from the top. And then we started this. So I do believe that I'm going to do the hardware in gold. So the hardware is going to end up in gold. So this is the deal, Lisa. You know, geodes, they come and they go, right? Um, but this was my thought. I think they're pretty classic. I think that geodes are sort of like a pearl necklace or black and white stripe. I just think they've been around forever and they are incredibly beautiful. And um, I just don't know that they're ever going to go out. You know, it's sort of like painting a mountainscape or something. I mean, I just think that they're appreciated no matter what. And I just needed a little touch of art on this piece. It needed some glam. So, so um, I went ahead and I've done it before. I've done it a couple times. I did it on a desk top in all greens, a pink desk in all greens, a lot, probably about three years ago, um, about three years ago. And I did it by painting a bunch of layers of paint in all different color greens. And then I took cardboard. Uh, I learned it from, what's that guy's name? Some, the, some uh, he used to make like little mini videos. Um, I forgot what his name is. Mark Montano. I think it's Mark Montano. And I cut the cardboard and, and had little notches in the cardboard in all different sizes. And then I just held the cardboard and I drug it through all the paint. I just drug it in the geo design and then I went back and added gold. Um, and so that was that. But this is not, that's not how I wanted to do this. And then you also see people do color pours. And I didn't want to do a color pour on a big chunky piece of furniture. You know, it's not like I can be like pouring the furniture all around. So I just decided, heck with it. I'm just going to... I'm just going to get my brushes out and I'm going for it. <laughs> so that's what I did. So we are definitely going to do the hardware in gold. And I'm going to wrap this geode. Like I said, it doesn't go all the way to the end. So um, these are design talks, right? Because we do design talk on this on, on Whimsical Wednesday, right? So I decided to just take it to about right here and bring it around. And I'm going to take it over and down on the other side. And that's what we are about to do together right now. And I'm going to talk to you about a few things. I want you to notice that I, you'll see when we do this, when we start working on it, it doesn't look like this at first. In fact, you aren't really going to think that you're doing it very well. And I really want to encourage you to try it because there's no pattern. It's free. It's just free. You just do it. So um, you do it. And then where all the colors naturally kind of break up, you take little tiny thin brush and you'll see us do this and you go back in and you make these little tiny lines and the thing is the trick is you want to have very definitive lines so you can have blending going on but then you need to go back and put like these hard lines and when I finish this piece and post it I'll do some zoomed in shots so you can come back and look at the zoomed in shot um, and you'll see what I'm talking about not just the gold but I went back where the navy was and I like made a hard navy line with a little tiny brush. Um, that is what made it, that's when it started becoming a geode. Before that, y'all know what it looked like? It looked like ocean waves. It looked like I was trying to do an ocean scene or waves, you know, in waves, water. And I wasn't trying to do water, I wanted to do a geode. So I wanna tell you that um, to make sure when you see this piece posted at, you know, in a, in a few days um, that you, are sure to look at the zoomed in and re when you go to copy it, because I know some of you will, that's why I'm here to teach you, right? I want you to look and make sure that you go in and do the tiny definitive lines, okay? All right, so I'm gonna spin this piece, so bear with me. Um, I'm gonna tell y'all that I have a 
a tray full of brushes. Like this is how I painted today, just like this. If you saw the, the teaser, this is how I did it. I have a tray full of big, little, all the way down to tiny, 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 just like this, okay? And then I also poured my paint colors out onto, um, I knew I didn't need very much and I have them covered because I didn't want them to be hard. I covered them because I poured a lot out. Um, and then these are my, look how pretty. I feel like that's like a preschool project. I poured my colors into this little tray. So, and you get them mixed up, like the blues and the gray and the grays and the, it's okay because they're gonna get all mixed up down there. All right, so I've got that. And then I just also, I wanted to keep my white pure. So um, I have my cotton right here, just right in the very center of this tray because if you look at this, if you do this without white, for some reason you really need the white and you need it to be pretty pure. So I have a pure white around this gold. I have a pure white over there on the side. These are not pure white, but I went back and added just some pure white and drug it through some of the wet colors and that really brought it alive as well. So don't forget to add some pure white and no matter what color, what color scheme you're working with. All right, I've got this on wheels, so you'll give me just a couple of seconds to get set up um, and get the camera angle just right, okay? And we will do this together. Y'all talk amongst yourselves, okay? This is, um, you know, when I teach classes, like I do teach online classes, um, this is what's nice about teaching a class is that I usually have a cameraman and I don't have to do all this moving around myself, but we're gonna do this ourselves all right so I think I'm gonna bring y'all over here oops I don't know what y'all are probably like looking at my nose and who knows all right let me get y'all over here bear with me it'll be worth it all right I do not need all my Dixie Belle paint jars sitting here that I just wanted to show y'all what colors I was using so I can move those out of the way. All right. And I need to go fetch one more light. So please hold so we want to have really really good light on the subject. And y'all should still be able to hear me, right? Because I've always got my microphone on. So you should be able to hear. And this is, <laughs> y'all just hit the floor. Hopefully, I didn't lose y'all. Hopefully, you can still hear me. Goodness gracious. All right. So, are y'all still there? Yay. Let's see. That needs to move. Oh, man, it turned my, turned my phone. I hate when that happens. All right, so my phone hit the hit the china hutch on the way down, so we got a little scratch. Dang it. All right. So guys, am I sideways? Because when the phone fell, it turned sideways. Hate that. But I'm ready. My nose is running. Uh-oh. Okay, y'all are still there. So am I sideways or am I up and down? Oh, that's not good. All right, let me see. I think someone told me when this happens that you have to turn your phone and then rotate your phone back. Nope, that didn't work. I'm good? I'm good like this? Really? Okay, well, guess what? <laughs> guess what? Y'all are, I'm completely sideways on this video now. That's just bizarre. So I can't even tell what y'all can see. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go off of, can y'all see where I'm gonna paint? Can y'all see right here? This is hilarious. Oh my God, I love y'all. Okay, so you can see around the front, right? Because I do want you to be able to see a little bit of that. Plus I need to be able to see. Y'all see where my phone hit the chest? My phone fell. Are y'all cracking up? 
Okay. All right. Y'all can see. All right. So here we go. So this is what I'm going to do. So I am, I, you don't need water. I didn't use any water. I just had my paints handy and I had all these different little brushes handy. And let's see, let's start, um, I'm going to kind of mark it with this. Let's start. So this is my top line up here. So I'm going to kind of go, all I'm doing is scratching into this, y'all, so I kind of get an idea how I want to do that. Okay, so that just kind of gives me an idea where I'm going. I don't have to stick with that pattern. Y'all, please let me know. If you, I am so happy because, honest to God, it's not a good view on my end. I'm just completely trusting y'all. So these are the most of the brushes that I ended up using, just like this. These, <laughs> I can't even tell if y'all can see these. These are one inch flat brushes. Y'all know that I use these all the time. I also used my watercolor brush, which is a super long handled brush that looks like this. I did go back and use this. When I told y'all I went back and added white, I used this. And then once, just at the very beginning, I did use this bigger Dixie Belle brush like this. So I think I'm gonna start with that and then we'll build off of that. So that was on the front, this sort of a taupe color. So what I did was I dipped my brush, that is taupe and gray. So I dip my brush, one side of my brush, I dip in one color. Now, if y'all watch Carolyn Muncy, if y'all watch her, she's a true artist, like she's a fine artist. I'm sure she shows you how to double dip your brushes, but one side of my brush is gonna be in my French linen, and the other side of my brush, I'm gonna dip, the other corner of my brush, I'm gonna dip in my Hurricane Gray. So do y'all see I have two colors? I even have a little bit of blue on there, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm assuming y'all can see what I've done here. I'm gonna kind of match this up. The only thing is, is that if the French linen is on top and the Hurricane Gray is on bottom, you wanna make sure you keep it like that. You don't wanna flip your brush and then have it, have it be different, all right? So I'm just gonna kind of follow. Now I don't have enough paint on there and that's okay. So this is what I'm talking about. I can't flip my brush. So I still got paint on this side. So I'm gonna just go back it up. As long as you keep the French linen on the French linen and the Hurricane Gray on the Hurricane Gray. I'm gonna go back here and do it again. Just keep doing it. And if I have to re-dip, because I need a little bit more Hurricane Gray, there we go. And do you see how this natural blend kind of takes place in that stripe? It's just natural. You know, we, we all do that blending. Well, here it is. It just happens naturally, just like that. Can y'all see that really well? Everything's fine. Okay, I'm going to stop asking y'all. Did y'all see me just wipe my nose? <laughs> All right, so I'm kind of done with this big. I'm kind of done with the big brush, but I'm going to just set it aside. Now I'm going to start using these one inch brushes. So I'm going to go back over here to the front and see what I did. The next big line across the top is my T rows. So I've got T rows, which is right here, and I'm going to mix it on the other side of my brush. The other corner, I'm going to dip back in to my French linen, all right? So T rose and French linen. Now I'm gonna put French linen by French linen and I'm gonna bring this up and around just like this and do it again. French linen, T rose, same thing. Just keep adding. And again, just make sure I'm dipping the French linen against the French linen and the T rose until I get it all the way down. Now, it's gonna be, end up being much more squiggly than this, but right now we're just getting sort of a pattern going, okay? We don't want it to be, I'm sure you noticed on the front side that there were not, it wasn't straight lines like this. It had a very squiggly appearance and, and um, we're, gonna, we're gonna do that in just a minute when we go back and kind of detail. Okay, so there's that. And let's see, back to the front again. Now we're gonna do some navy. So I'm gonna set this little brush aside because I'm gonna go back and use it again in a little bit. I'm gonna get another brush. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna get another brush like this. Does anyone have any questions? Let's see, fine. You think this is fun? I'm so glad. Hey, Gayla, hi. Okay, so the next row around the front side here, Oh my goodness, don't know if y'all can see, but around the front side right here 
are the two blues. It's the blues that look kind of like ocean waves. So I'm gonna take my brush again, and I'm gonna dip it in both my blues, my Bunker Hill blue and in the navy. This is what it looks like, Bunker Hill blue in the navy. And when I re-dip, I wanna re-dip just like that. So I look up here, and it looks like I had in the navy on top, so I'm gonna put in the navy on top, and same thing. Now, I didn't drag, look at that bunker blue. I didn't get really enough. I'll go back up. And I'm going to go down here and add it. Now, um, on the front side, I actually, okay, same, make sure you get bunker hill blue on the bottom and the navy on the top. On the front side, I actually uh, split my geode up so it had several centers in different places, but this is just going to be the geode that's carried around from the other side. So we're just doing one pattern, but that's actually easier, I think, to teach you guys. Okay, so that's that. Now I'm going to set that brush down, and I'm going to get another brush, and it looks like I've got pure navy. So I'm just going to do a brush just like this, and we're going to go with pure navy. Okay, so here we go. Um, Gloria, this is fun. It actually is really fun, and today was my first time ever to do it. I didn't even practice on a board or anything. I just went for it. Okay, with my, with my inspiration. Y'all heard my inspiration was a rug. Okay, so this is a pure navy. Just like that. All right, so the next line looks like was white. So here we're gonna go. I'm gonna use this brush right here because I'm gonna use, I know that I'm gonna pull white through a lot of these colors. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and just use a pure white and I'm gonna do a big line of it. Big, big line of white following the pattern on the front. I kind of like to get it into that blue a little bit. I wanted to drag some of the blue. I'm going to go back up here and introduce a little bit more of that blue so it's not so harsh white. There we go. You see how easy this is, y'all? You just keep building. And I know it does not look like a geode yet. I know. So don't second guess yourself when you're trying this at home. Um, just keep going, you know, like who says that, uh, Dory on Finding Nemo. Okay, so now it looks like I did Bunker Hill Blue. I'm going to get a different brush, and I'm going to do Bunker Hill Blue with French Linen. I haven't done that yet. So Bunker Hill on one side, French Linen on the other, just like this. <laughs> thank you, Junk and Daisy, thank you. Yeah, inspiration straight from a rug. Okay, it looks like I had uh, Bunker Hill bl blue on the top. Okay, started to kind of squiggle, squiggle it just a little bit. We're going to go back and squiggle some more when we do details. All right, now um, looks like I'm going to use French linen and tea rose again. So y'all know I've already got a brush. I already have French linen and tea rose on a brush. It actually looks like this one has uh, French linen on top and tea rose on the bottom. Now my tray down here, guys, is a mess. Like the only one that's clean and pure looks like in the navy. But look over here, look at my tea rose. It's got all sorts of colors in it. Look at my French linen, it's full of navy. It's okay, because this is, we're just replicating nature and it's very, uh, there, there's no, nothing is, I mean, it's all perfect. Of course it's perfect, but you know what I mean. There's no real true pattern of color. It's okay to, all right. I kind of want to bring that around the front there. I'm just blending the around the corner. All right, and then I'm going to bring a little bit more tea rose, uh, not tea rose, French linen down underneath it here. And then we're going to go into some white and navy. And then we're going to introduce some of the detail colors and start dividing it up. So I'm going to do white again, a pretty big band of white, it looks like, like this. Now, this has gold here, so I'm gonna, that gold center, which is the center of that geode, can y'all still see? Um, 
Thank you, Patricia. Thank you. All right, so it looks like this white, so I'm going to bring that gold around. It looks like the white will end up kind of being, you see that? I'm going to finish out my circle here, you know, because the geodes kind of travel and their patterns make circles. So that's going to be all gold. And then I'm going to go back down here and get some more. I'm just finishing out my puzzle that's on the front. I'm going to get more of the pink, the tea rose, and I'm going to end with Bunker Hill and French linen. And we are done with the big portion of it. And then we'll just start with our uh, going in and adding detail. Okay, so let's compare. Let me kind of flip it or roll it back and forth. So this is what we've got. Does not look like the front yet. And then that's what the front looks like. Much more detailed, much more squiggly. I still can't believe that my camera is sideways. Oh, Chelsea, is Haley on? Okay, so we're gonna do this now. We're gonna do this now. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna get our tiny, tiny, tiny little brush, which I'm gonna use this one right here. Little, little tiny angled brush like this. And I'm gonna get our, we're gonna work on navy first. So I'm gonna get in the navy, I'm gonna load it up with some in the navy. I'm gonna go right here where I already did in the navy and I'm gonna sharpen up my line, okay? So what, can y'all see? I really wish I could tell if y'all could see. Okay, so I'm gonna sharpen up my line and I'm gonna squiggle it. Just like that. And right now the squiggle is kind of doing like a blend of the two colors and that's okay because we'll go back and make it like a hard navy in just a little bit. But do you see the difference in that versus these? See that just looks like, I don't even know what that looks like. But once you start putting this in there, it starts to make sense. You're like, oh, I see what we're doing. So here we go again. I'm going to take navy up against this white. So you're gonna see this a lot better. Watch what happens here. And you don't have to do perfect wave, like jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. You can kind of just naturally let the, let the brush fall in your hand. Like I leave it floating kind of in my hand and just roll it as I go. See, big difference in the, in the way that stripe looks compared to those right there. So here I'm going to do another navy one right down here between the French linen. And the uh, Bunker Hill blue and the navy stripe. And it still doesn't look, you know, it's still not looking super geodish, but whoa, when you start adding the, pulling the white through, and adding the gold, that's when you're like, oh yeah, baby, I see it now. Okay. Um, let's see. Holy moly, I'll have to look back and watch this again from the beginning. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. Hi, Tanya from Macon, Missouri. Um, so earlier, you guys, I dropped my phone and it made my phone camera, it made my camera turn sideways. And so, um, yeah, so now I'm doing a sideways painting job. So I, if I'm talking to you, I've got my head all like this, cocked sideways. Okay, so now I'm gonna go down here and I think that I am going to harden up with the French linen. So there's a difference between these two here. I think I'm gonna use the French linen and make my line a little more squiggly kind of pull in a little bit of the tea rose into it because everything is still wet. Like that. It's all in the details with this, you guys. I spent a lot of time on this today. It's very much detail oriented because that's what's gonna make it real. All right, so I'm gonna pull through. Um, actually, it looks like on the front, I pulled through some white. So in between this tea rose and the French linen. I already have white on my brush here. Um, I'm gonna kind of blot that out a little bit and I'm just gonna incorporate some white right down the middle here. 
and then I'll go back with, that looks too hard. You can tell by looking at it. So I'll go back with my brush that I had French linen and tea rose on and I'm gonna run my brush through it just like this. So it gives like a white highlight and not such a hard stripe. Then I take my little tiny brush that's got French linen on it and I'm gonna go right here like this. And you kind of got to reload your brush because otherwise um, you end up dragging some of the other color and you end up just sort of making like a muddy line down the middle. Okay, I'm going to do that same thing down here. All right, so on the top, you know what I didn't do, guys? I'm just realizing across the top, I did like a navy and a little bit of Bunker Hill blue. So I'm going to take my brush that's got navy and Bunker Hill blue on it. Um, hello, Miss Rachel. Uh, hi, Gianna. Um, so I'm going to do, I want navy on the top and Bunker Hill blue. It looks like I had navy on the top and Bunker Hill blue. I'm going to load a lot, like there's a lot on my brush. So I'm going to do that right here and I'm going to go ahead and really, really squiggle this out. So doing like the big squiggle like that. All right, again, load your brush exactly on the same side. So you're just kind of carrying on like that. Come back up here, do it again, drags that paint all the way down. So it's one fluid movement and again and I don't know if on the front side if y'all can see uh, that the navy is the very last stripe up at the top but I like it because it's really subtle the way it pulls into the Bunker Hill blue so I know we've been doing a lot of focus you guys on painless painting and paint the way and I do, I love that. But sometimes just learning um, different techniques like this, really, because this isn't hard. This isn't like you're trying to do a tree or a flower or I'm doing a white line through the middle. I'm gonna do a highlight. You know, just like when we, when we blend on furniture and we end up doing white in the center of the drawers and then we go back and we blend again. That's what I'm doing right here. And I'm gonna drag my same, same navy blue brush through it. And I'm just going to hit it kind of hard, kind of press. I want to drag that white and blend it into my colors. So this is something beginners can do. You do not have to be an advanced painter. Look how pretty that is. Can y'all see that? You don't have to be an advanced painter to do this. Let's see. Wow, I love to try this. Been thinking of something. Oh, yay. I'm so glad, Michelle. I am so glad. From Tucson, Arizona, Lupe. Yay. Hey there, you're gonna come see us when we have our, shop, our workshop in Arizona, you should. Okay, so it does look like here down on the front, I did a good line of navy again with a little bit of French linen right here around where we're gonna be putting gold. Okay, just like that. Navy, French linen, like this. Okay, last thing I need to add is I forgot that I have a one more white streak I need to add and then we're gonna break out the gold, okay? So one more white streak up here. I'm gonna drag this through right alongside that blue highlight that I did of Bunker Hill Blue. And then I'm gonna get, pick up my navy and Bunker Hill Blue brush again and I'm gonna drag that white out through it just like that see it's just layers and I'm going kind of slow when I add, I don't know if you've noticed but when I add the white I kind of look look how pretty when I add the white and I pull the white I go slower because I want my blues or whatever color I want it ha to have time to kind of sink in to that white I want them to kind of marry I want it to give time for those two colors to marry a little bit. 
And then you see how I'm kind of just rocking my brush like that? See, I loved it, but it doesn't matter. I went back over it again. It looks just as good. Looks better, probably. So, can y'all see that this is Bunker Hill Blue and then it brings in the navy and then white and then Bunker Hill Blue, right? You see that? Okay, so who is ready? Who is ready? Looks like I had a little bit of white right here. Who's ready to do some gold? I'm just dragging, I didn't dip my brush, guys. This is just leftover paint. I'm just highlighting right along this blue line because it's what I did on the front. And that is pretty, pretty cool. And one more, I did a, had a little bit more white here. I'm gonna do a little bit more. It's just a little brighter. Drag that brush one more time and I promise we're gonna break out the gold. I promise. Okay, all right, so as you all know, when I want a super, super opaque gold, who am I talking to here? Thank you, uh, thank you, Annette. When I want a super opaque gold, um, I use this, it's an oil-based, it's very strong, it is not Dixie Belle, it's liquid leaf. A lot of us artists use it. You just, it's a tiny little, tiny little bottle that's like $10, we call it liquid crack. Um, I'm just going to use a, a bigger soft artist brush right now just to fill in. Um, it's very, very fumy paint, but it's super opaque. So here we go. I'm going to fill this in right here in the middle. Uh, you need to use mineral spirits um, to clean your brush. It will not come off. You know how our, all of our Dixie Belle paints, whether it's the metallics or whatever we're using, uh, do clean up with soap and water and this does not usually honestly I just throw my brushes away but um, I try not to use it that often just because it is so fumey but you really cannot get another intense gold like this there's a crack here on the side in the molding so it makes it a little bit harder but I'm bringing over the center of that geode from the front I'm just filling it in and then we're going to do some tiny squiggles okay all right so this one you see this brush is so loose that i'm not going to be able to do a lot of detail work with that you'll see that you can't do detail work with that it's just too flimsy it's not going to stay you know you go to put it on the piece and it's just going to collapse that is not a good brush do not try to do detail work with a brush like that instead you need like one of these very very short tip brushes super short tip so when you go to to work point it's going to stay right where you want it okay um what gold is called i couldn't hear you oh you couldn't hear me sorry it's called liquid leaf liquid leaf all right so looking across the front here um uh, actually i do have a fatter line so i am going to use um, I think I double did it. All right, let's do, let's do some skinny lines. So here we go. I'm going to carry across this one. I'm going to keep my bottle up here. And all I'm doing, y'all, I mean, no steady hand. In fact, the least steady, the better. I am just bringing this gold paint, letting my hand shake, letting my arm shake. It doesn't matter. I don't need to stabilize it. It would probably help if my paint was a little bit more dry, but I don't have my heat gun out and ready. This paint would go a lot further and a lot smoother if my, there we go, if my paint were already dry. Super humid here. So I'm really letting this squiggle. Okay, now the trick to this looking authentic is doubling some of your lines. So get real close to it. You can let it touch if you want, but you wanna let that vein pull through again, just like this. 
you see it's okay to let it touch, straighten out, it's okay, but they run real close together. Not all of them, but just make sure that you do run. If you look at geodes, you'll see that there's double, double veins that run real close together like this. And I went a little bit shorter, I mean a little bit straighter there, so I'm going to add a little bit of a jig here. One last touch. It doesn't show up near as well on the pink as it does on, I'm sorry I keep putting my head in y'all's way. Um, okay, let's do some on the blue, all right? So let's do a double right down here. So I'm going to run this one right along the line of this. See this is more dry so it's letting me go a long time. That, that tea rose was not dry. Oh sorry I get quiet when I start detailing. Alright one more let's do a double. And see how I'm just being super free with it y'all? Just very free. You can widen it out a little bit if you want to let it kind of break away and then come back like that. All right, so there is a big line of gold paint right here. Um, again, this is not as dry, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. So I just used the small brush and just did like a double. But honestly, I could just use a different brush if I wanted to. Let's pick up another brush. Let's see. I've got one that's like this. Let's just do a bigger brush. Oops, Tracy's quiet. Doesn't happen very often, y'all. Enjoy it. Usually I'm yapping and getting in trouble for yapping too much. But see, when I'm doing like a tiny detail, I do tend to get quiet. All right. So, where else do we have some gold? Do I get in y'all's way when I do this? Um. Okay, so the last string of gold looks like it goes around this, like what I call the nucleus. <laughs> This reminds me of an atom. Okay, so it looks like it follows the white line of center here. Same with the bottom. All right, let me see if there's anything else. I've got my doubles. I did that one across. Oh, one more. One more tiny line runs right across this kind of a highlight up here. So I'm going to finish that. And then obviously I'm going to need to turn this piece uh, around and get a better vision. I'll do this after um, I'm not, when I'm not live. And connect my front and side. I need to go in and kind of blend that out. Almost done. A little bit more. Voila! Whew, that paint is strong. I'm going to close that up. Um, I think that's it. So what y'all think? Pull it back and dang, I hate it that y'all are sideways, but I think that y'all can see that pretty good, right? Yay! Yay, yay, yay. Thank you. Oh, wow. It's already late. I didn't realize. Dang, y'all. Um, here. Where are you? There you are. <laughs> this is so crazy. This has happened to me before. Why does this happen? I don't understand. Anyway, it's late. There's another live right behind me, so um, we'll have to go. Uh, since y'all don't see me,